Hey everybody, I'm Josh. And I'm Rachel. And today we are taking it to New Orleans to go to some of the most classic places. The newest place we're going is 65 years old and everything gets older from there. Yep, lots of places over 100 years old here. Let's go. All right, we are starting off our classic trip through New Orleans at Damalisa's. It is at the corner of Bellcastle and Annunciation. And it was founded in 1918. That's Ooh. a long time ago. <laughs> it is a quick little lift ride away from the French Quarter, but this place is known for its po' boys. And man, it delivers on its it po' boys. Did. Uh, prices are very decent. We ended up with three small po'boys and some french fries, two beers, for about $55. And let me say, the small, come on, they were easily shareable. Yeah, it's like an eight inch <laughs> sub. It was funny, the lady who took our order told Josh, that seems like a lot of food for the table, but then suggested french fries. Yes, yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we ended up with three different sandwiches. We, we started with the catfish, the shrimp and the roast beef with gravy. All right, so starting with the catfish, I thought it was good. Um, there's sometimes I'm not, I'm not the biggest catfish person. I thought the flavor was really good. Uh, the batter is thinner, so once you start dressing it, which is going to include your lettuce, your tomato, your pickles, which the pickles were amazing. Oh, the pickles were so good. But it does take away from that crisp a little bit. That's what I would say about the cra uh, catfish one as well. Is I lost the crunchy fry part yeah. on it. The flavor, delicious. You can tell it's fresh. There's no fishiness on it for catfish, as some people may have tasted in the past. I thought it was great. Again, the star on that one was the bread and the pickles. And if you're looking for a good crisp fry, though, stick, go with that shrimp one. Oh, that shrimp one. It's loaded. Like, there are so many pieces of shrimp on that. Yes. And it's delicious. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that that was definitely my favorite one. Oh, me too, by far. It was so good. Now, that's not to take away anything from that roast beef one, which is a monster. It is a monster. But please, that thing is huge. We did add gravy to it, which I would highly recommend. It's <laughs> super tender, super juicy, flavorful. Now, I don't know if the Swiss was needed. I don't know that was either. I didn't really taste it on there. Yeah. But, and there is a brown mustard on there, kind of at the strong first couple bites flavor. that were strong. Otherwise, it married nicely as you ate further into the sandwich. Consistent all the way through was that bread. Yes. Oh the, my. the bread was the best bread that <laughs> we've had of yes. a po' boy. Um, now, we also tried Parkway, which is another old, old school, um, great po' boy sandwich place here in New Orleans. Uh, you can check out our video up there there one of those spots <laughs> or even down in the description below yeah both of them are very good i would recommend both of them yes now the place is tiny there's five tables in there it's loud yep. tiny um but fast we yep. get here like within 40 minutes we're able to get in line order and eat so. fast great service mm -hmm. great taste highly recommend All right, a must do for us when we're in New Orleans is oysters. Ugh. And where else to go but Acme Oyster House. Founded in 1910. Yes. I can't tell you, like, that's what, 112 years ago? Crazy. That's a long time. <laughs> um, we ended up doing some raw oysters as well as some char-grilled oysters, which is a New Orleans specialty. Yes. Uh, there is breadcrumbs, cheese, and butter. We got, and we got added crab. Yes. And it, it was so good. It was so worth it. A <laughs> uh, little over 30 bucks for the two of them. We also grabbed a couple of drinks. But fun little atmosphere. There is a wait, so get here early and be ready to wait. All right, so if you're coming to New Orleans, you know that food is not the only big thing here. There's a lot of drinking going on. And a lot of fancy cocktails. Yes, and yeah. so we decided to try a few of them that are well known here in New Orleans. All right, so the first stop was at the Carousel Bar in Hotel Monteleon. Yeah, that was fancy. Yes, 
I ended up trying the View Carré, I believe. I don't know how to say it. Um, I actually felt like it was very similar in that Sazerac, old-fashioned kind of family. Mm -hmm. It was good. I don't know that it was so different that I would go with it instead of something else, but the the environment was very cool. We did have to wait for um, a couple seats at the bar, probably about 10, 15 minutes. We just yeah. hung out and waited until somebody left. Not very what did long. you do? I went with the Pim's Cup. It's a lighter, fruitier, summery type cocktail. Not very strong on alcohol, a lot more fruit. Kind of tastes, to me, like an iced tea with a little bit of fruit in it. It wasn't that... A little bit fizzy, right? Yeah, it had a little bit of fizz to it yeah. as well, but it wasn't overly strong. Now, we did do a second drink at the Carousel Bar, which was Highly our recommend. favorite drink. Highly recommend this one. <laughs> Hand shaken pina coladas. Oh my God. Oh, if you like delicious. pina coladas like we do, um, <sighs> this is that just even better. It was dangerous. Like yes. it, we could have sat there all night with those. Yep, mm -hmm. I totally agree. And then after that, we ended up walking down Bourbon Street a little bit and had probably the grossest drink I've ever had in my life. It was disgusting. But it is well known here in New Orleans, apparently. Apparently. It is at the Absinthe House. And it was an absinthe frappe. Think Starbucks, but with yes. absinthe. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was if, gross. Yeah, if you like black licorice. I don't even know if you have to like black licorice. You'd have to like black licorice. Well, that's what it tastes like. Yeah. So, yeah, if you like black licorice, you will love it. Yeah. If you aren't a fan of black licorice mixed with rubbing alcohol, <laughs> like us, then you're that's not going to be a big exactly fan of it. it so was. It was it. Yeah, from our standpoint, we do not recommend it, but maybe you like it. Two of the oldest bars, though, in New Orleans. All right, so we did get lost afterwards. Whole big story, but we made it back to the hotel, and we're having an amazing dinner tonight. A well-known place here in New Orleans. It was called Commander's Palace, and it was originated back in 1893. Wow. You ready? That's a long time ago. I'm ready. Let's go eat. We do need to get dressed up for this, so let's go. All right, we are back from Commander's Palace. Oh my God. That was so damn good. <laughs> so damn good. Yes, um, if you are looking for a lot of great, well done know. Southern comfort food, this is the place to go to. It is, and it's just so, like I told Josh, it's like warms your soul. It yeah. is so good. It's no wonder why it's been around for 130 years. Yeah. 130 years. That's a long time. That's crazy. So, it's so good. Yeah, so when we first pulled up, I was a little <laughs> thrown off because this gentleman kept like kind of talking to us and we weren't 100% sure, but he was truly there just to true open the door for you. Right. Like that's where it starts. And <laughs> as we were walking to our table, we had been said hello to by like five different people. Yeah. It is. It started off with great service from there and the food just nailed it. The food did um, nail it. All right, the shrimp and the pork belly for it is for appetizers. Apps. So good. The shrimp had this bite to it. It was a nice mm -hmm. little heat with, but it also came with a pickled onion and pickled okra that evened it out. I thought it was more, initially I thought the sauce was kind of Asian-like, but mm -hmm. actually it was just Cajun-like. Yeah. Um, it was so good. And, it, and then I, the pork belly. It tasted it, like ham. Yes. It was delicious. You you expect it to be like that more melt and then bacony. Yeah. Um, but it melted. It, it really ate like like mm -hmm. ham and it was delicious. The soups, um, two different gumbos. One of them is a shrimp and eggplant gumbo. The other one is the classic chicken and sausage. And the other soup was the turtle soup. Turtle. <laughs> turtle and we soup. liked it. Yeah, turtle soup was my favorite. There was a bit of that, um, they call it the crystals hot sauce in yes. there. And it came out very strong, but that soup was so good. Now, as far as meat goes, the turtle is ground, and, um, like, and then it's 25% ground turtle, 75% ground veal. Yeah. Um, but it eats 
really well. I actually was kind of a little nervous about that going into it, but Me it was too. very good. Um, my favorite was the shrimp gumbo. You did like the turtle. I did. Turtle was my favorite. Um, and then going into the main courses, I ended up with the pork chop, double cut pork chop, that which was, was gigantic. I was like, it was as big as my head. As big as her head. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> and I ended up with some kind of um, pecan crusted fish. Probably the best fish I've had all so year, if not so the best good. of my life. Yeah, so the pecan good. crusted adds this really nice texture. And then you add some Cajun flavors. You add a nice corn hearty chowder. white fish mm -hmm. with the corn chowder. <clears throat> I thought that the fish was amazing. It was the best one. Yeah. Now the black eyed peas did take over the pork chop a little bit for me, which I'm not I a agree. big black eyed pea fan. But if you are, you'll love it. Yeah, and, I, and Josh and I said that that is a personal preference. I don't think it really takes away from the dish. We put the pork chop on a different plate, cut it, fantastic. It was great. Cooked great, moist, well seasoned. It, it was a great piece of pork. So that was a fantastic piece. And then we did two desserts. <laughs> All right, we did a bread pudding souffle. We're ridiculous, there's days we're ridiculous. I, I love souffle, I love bread pudding. So, so we had together. to. <laughs> yep, and then the other one was a specialty of the restaurant, which is a um, apple cobbler. A yes, which is like an apple crisp almost, which with some uh, it was an ice cream mm -hmm. that kind of makes you think similar to vanilla, but it's fancier name than that. Yeah, we'll put it. We'll try to put it down below. Right. Either way, I I'm not a big fan of baked apples generally, but I loved it. He ate half of it in the I time did. he did. He's like, it's gone. I'm yeah, like, oh. and, and I'll say the souffle was the lightest souffle I've ever had before. Now, the good. whiskey cream sauce is strong <laughs> flavored whiskey. It is strong So whiskey. don't just go pouring that stuff on there like I did. It ended up overkilling it a little bit, but it just watch so yourself. If, if you're a big fan of whiskey, you'll love it. Again, the atmosphere added into this. It was like you're in someone's home. It was fantastic. Service, service yeah, was service was spot excellent. On. This is easily a, a good, top ten meal for us of the year. Absolutely. And we are now in at the end of November. Yep. So that means that it is definitely gonna make the top ten. It is possible for top five. I would say it's we a strong possibility for top five. Mm -hmm. So highly there you recommend go. Commander's Palace in New Orleans. Yeah. Can't wait for tomorrow because we got a whole bunch more food. <laughs> We'll see you then. All right, new day, and the weather turned, but but our luck with food has continued. It has continued. Uh, we did go to Willie Mae's Scotch House, which is 65 years old. Yes. That works out to 1953? No, 57. We'll put that down below. But <laughs> we know 65 years. And this yeah. is actually the newest place that we have yeah. are going to on this trip. Um, we have been here once before, and I gotta say, I think we'll go back every single time we're in New Orleans. Every time. Every single time. Delicious. We actually waited outside in the rain, 50 degrees, no sun, and it was 50 minutes that we had to wait for this. And when, that was short. Yeah, when we left, it was an hour, 10 minute wait, and there were even more people outside. Yeah. But it's because it's all about the chicken. The oh. fried chicken, it's one of the best. Any list that you could come up with, this one should always be on your list. Yes, for best fried chicken. It is so good. And today we tried something different as well. We tried yes. butter beans for the first time. I'm pleasantly surprised. So I've never had them before, but like I know it's it's a southern thing, and we want to try it. It was delicious. Mm -hmm. um, the chicken itself is the most moist chicken I've ever had. So much flavor, so much. There's a little bit of heat, not too yep. much, not too little. Um, good saltiness, the crisp on the fry. It just. It, you can't beat it. Yes. It's so it, good. You know, if you are a fan of fried chicken, you should make a pilgrimage to <laughs> Willie Mae's Scotch House. I agree. Every year if you can do it. <laughs> yes. And just you gotta enjoy it. Enjoy that one. Um, we actually even did the fried shrimp this time. Which was just we were as like, good. Heck, let's get three entrees. <laughs> because we were very hungry by the time we made it there. We did not have breakfast this morning. And you know, the fried shrimp was very good. I actually yeah. really enjoyed the mac and cheese as well, oh, which I love mac and cheese. And a lot of times I'm disappointed because it's more cafeteria style, so it's overdone. It wasn't overdone and it had some heat to it as well. So if you're into heat, 
this will be the right spot for you. Now, if you don't wanna wait, we suggest getting there early. They open at 11, yeah. they don't take reservations. It's like an online, put your um, name on a list, but you can't get it even on their website. It's right. truly when you get there. Yeah, we actually, um, we had some stuff going on this morning, so we couldn't go until 12, 12.30, so that's when we arrived, which yeah. we thought was probably gonna be peak, but we left at two o'clock, and the line was even longer. Even longer. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but it's so good, and it's consistent. Yes. Two times in a row, six months apart, it was delicious. Yep. All right, we've had an interesting evening. <laughs> the weather is terrible, if we haven't said that before. Um, it's probably like 40, 50 degrees, and it's raining all day long. All day long. <laughs> <laughs> but we ended up going to, I'm gonna say this wrong, Galatois or Galatours? It depends who you ask. Yes, we actually had an Uber driver say one and the Uber driver say the other. The waiter said waiter a different said one. A different one. Mm -hmm. Either way, it's been around since? 1905. Long time, a long holy time. cows. The building is really cool. It echoes a lot and it's loud. I think it's lively. It, I would call it lively yes. for even a Friday it was, it was or a quite Saturday loud. night. Yeah. Josh, go ahead and insert scene right now. It was loud in that restaurant. One of the coolest things they do there is you can tell it's kind of old school, traditional. Right. Maybe a lot of local people show up because they ding a glass, ding, 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 and they, <laughs> the entire restaurant sings happy birthday. It's very nice. It's very cool. It was pretty cool. <laughs> we actually were there for an anniversary, so we did get a holler out, basically, yeah, for us. a toast. Which yeah. we got a free glass of champagne, so that was cool. We'll take it. All right, dinner. It was very... We over-ordered. Oh, I mean, God. surprise. <laughs> of course we did. Um, but I would say that it, it felt like a very classic uh, French New Orleans style. Yep. Um, Oysters Rockefeller, not my style. Not my favorite. Uh, but they are interesting. <laughs> yeah. If you're they going for those those green oysters that you've seen before, this is them. And they um, were huge. Yeah, the flavor was a little bit overwhelming for me. But we did have some escargot, which was very good, very classic. Take the garlic house butter. French bread. Dip it in that. French butter. bread was delicious. It was very it was soft so but also mm -hmm. crispy on the outside. Um, but the best appetizer that we had was a duck crepe. Crepe. I didn't even know they had those here. Yeah, duck, a homemade uh, cheese of some sort, and then a mm -hmm. cherry compote and um, pistachios. Delicious. So tasty. Highly recommend. Very rich. Uh, I don't know that you could eat more than one order of it, but it was so delicious. Yes, I so agree. So good. Um, and <clears throat> then for our main entree, I ended up with the redfish. And I did a filet. So I did a 10 ounce filet because the seven ounce we thought might I think that 10 small. ounce was 17 ounces. It was the biggest <laughs> filet huge. I've ever had in my life. But then we also topped it with king crab. <laughs> oh the my. King crab was key. <laughs> Let me just tell you. Oh my. Highly, highly, highly recommend the king yes. crab. It, now the king crab was half the price of the whole steak. Yes. That 10 ounce filet, which I'm saying is 17 ounces, was actually 36 bucks. Yeah. 36 bucks? For a freaking filet. Well done, too. And in mm -hmm. a. I always, I always say that, like with steak, well done. Not well it was done, cooked. Done temperature. well. Yeah, it was done well. But not cooked over whatever, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it was delicious. Uh, we did do some shrimp etouffee, which actually was very good, but we were kind of full. Um, we did another appetizer that we used as a side. It was some kind of fluffy oh yeah, potato thing. The potatoes, I don't remember what they they're called. They seemed like airy potato fries. Yes. They were pretty decent and served with some bol Served with Bernays sauce. Yes. It was good. So if you're gonna pay for the Bernays sauce for the steak, go ahead and just get the potato 
thing that I'm putting down below because I can't remember the name of it. I but it is like the, it's like an airy chip. Souffle, potato souffle. Yes, very cool. It's mm -hmm. super thinly sliced potatoes that then have some air in between them. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and then for dessert, we ended up ordering the sweet potato cheesecake. Yum. Very good. Yum. It comes with the pecan or candy pecans and then a whipped cream that it didn't taste like. It didn't have the texture of whipped cream. Which Rachel Jen yeah. doesn't like whipped cream. That's why she's making a point of it. I thought it was great. It was fantastic. The sweet potato cheesecake was not near that sweet. Mm -hmm. it, it offered a, almost a savory sweet bite to end the meal. It was fantastic. Overall, very good if you're going mm -hmm. for that classic New Orleans style. I Check definitely recommend out. it, and it's right on Bourbon Street. Now, right afterwards, we found ourselves at the French 75 bar inside of Arnaud's. How long has Arnaud's been around? 1970. It's been around a long time. 100 years. 100 years. <laughs> We're going to say that. 100 years that Arnaud's been around. Um, now, it is a restaurant, there's multiple bars in there. But it ended up being very great, and honestly, it gave us the classic drinks we were going for. We did a daiquiri, a hurricane, a sazerac, a... Number 75. French 75, yeah. which is what they're famous for. So... And then two other drinks that they're probably... One is a specialty cocktail, and then the other was espresso martini. I'm yes. telling you, the vibe in there was so cool. It was just like a nice, comforting vibe. The bartenders, they would speak to you, but didn't make it awkward and uncomfortable very cool wonderful. very cool mm -hmm. bar um, great way to end the night yeah I enjoyed them all and I'll go back again I had a I great time me too really a fun way to have our final night here in New Orleans this has been awesome trying out these classic restaurants has been something that we knew we wanted to do and we love finding what cities are famous for so putting this together this weekend has been super fun Lots of fun, lots of history here. Mm -hmm. Well worth taking in. Okay, no visit to New Orleans is complete until you hit some beignets, and we found Cafe Du Monde. Yep, Cafe Du Monde, the original location, which is down over by Jackson Square, which opened up. 1862, this place has been around. Jeez, yes. <laughs> it's and, and now, we had been here before, and we actually did not enjoy it. It was during the pandemic, and they were actually pre-packaging everything in yeah. bags, and it actually kind of tasted stale. They've got everything up and going again right now. Fresh. Fresh, fresh. Yep. You just sit down, waitress comes to you, goes, picks up your order, and it's cash only. Yep. That's the piece. Cash only. And prepare to be messy. <laughs> ended up having brunch here at Brennan's which opened in 1940 something I'll put it down below um, so another very old restaurant opened up for brunch at 9 o'clock here on a Sunday the line was long waiting to get in yeah but it was worth it it was really a good 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 brunch we got there about 20 minutes early so we got pretty early in the line and we got seated um, great service the building is amazing and they actually are just letting us walk around up on the second level right now and it's so beautiful um the food was awesome too food was really good service yeah. was really good we drinks were really good it was yeah. fun um mm -hmm. so a couple of things that originated here well one thing that originated here was the bananas foster you're definitely going to see that and you should definitely get it <laughs> agreed it um, was good you know a table side presentation they make a little caramel sauce with the bananas throw some rum in there get some flames up and it's served with vanilla ice cream awesome and then we started off with some seafood gumbo 
It was good. Which was very mm -hmm. good. A little and bit he, of spice at the end. Yeah. And they actually split it for us, so that's always nice. Yeah. Um, I ended up doing the special, which was a rib cap, like Steak eight ounce rib yeah. cap, and eggs and hash browns for only, I think, $45 or about that. Yeah, and I did the, um, it was like Eggs Benedict with a little bit of their special sauce. Mm -hmm. It was a Brennan's original type thing here. Very good. Yeah, it was good. And then as far as drinks go, I went with the Brandy Milk Punch, which has been not originated here, but perfected here. That's and I will true. agree with it. We had one over at Galatoire's last night, and I thought this one was way, way, way better. better. Mm -hmm. And highly recommend it if you're interested in that drink. And I had a pear bellini type thing. It was one of their fall seasonals. I, I can't complain about those type of things. They're no. fun. This was awesome. Definitely put Brennan's on your list. Yeah, I think we could come back for dinner for sure. Yes, we're not sure. We might be able to have one more place in this uh, video, <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs>so we are at the airport and we had one last thing that we've been trying to get to the, these last couple trips this goes back to central grocery with the muffalata sandwich it's currently closed and it's doing repairs due to a recent hurricane so that's why we couldn't get it there but, but here at the airport, the airport they do have it so we went ahead and got half a sandwich we're going to show you that um, it does look like it's some italian meat some ham and then this olive, olive spread yeah. yes uh, very unique to new orleans but we're gonna go ahead and try it and you can get it here at the airport along with Cafe Du Monde. We found one here too. Yes. All right, we just finished up that muffalata. What'd you think about it? I think it's a good sandwich and I like mm -hmm. the olive salad on it. I, I did would, too. I would actually put mayonnaise on it or something else more, but yeah, I'm not, otherwise it's good. Normally not an olive person, but I actually did think it went well went well on it. The salami is a strong taste. Yeah. Uh, the mortadella, I, I mean, it's a good cheese, but it's not overpowering at all. The bread is very good. It's somewhere between a ciabatta and a focaccia. I thought it was good. Yeah, I would say if you're here and want to try it, give it a shot. It's well worth it. Yes. Well, we hope you enjoyed coming along with us as we tried all these classic restaurants and eateries here in New Orleans. And if you're looking for more stuff, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. You can also follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All our links are down below. See ya.